It is a cozy, rainy Sunday afternoon and we are making some French onion soup. This is actually Julia Child's recipe. It is delicious. It takes quite a while, so this is not something that I would recommend for a quick weeknight meal, but it's great for the weekend. So here's what you need. You need five to six cups of thinly sliced yellow onion. You need some olive oil, two tablespoons of butter, a half a teaspoon of sugar, a teaspoon of salt, three tablespoons of flour, six cups of beef stock, a cup of dry red or dry white wine, a bay leaf, a half a teaspoon of ground sage, salt and pepper to taste, 12 ounces of Swiss cheese grated, four ounces of Parmesan cheese grated, a half of a raw yellow onion, two to three tablespoons of cognac. If you don't wanna add that or the wine, you can look up substitutes online. I've seen a few different things that people have used as substitutes. You need some French bread, and those are all the ingredients you need. So the first thing I'm gonna do is get those onions in on the stove on the heat with some olive oil and butter. In a large stock pot on the stove, I have a tablespoon of olive oil and two teaspoons of butter heating up and melting. Once those are nice and warmed up, I'm gonna go ahead and add in the thinly sliced onions and then cover them and we're they're gonna go for about 20 minutes until they are translucent and then we will go ahead and caramelize the onions. The olive oil and butter heated up, we're adding in our thinly sliced onions. And then we're gonna go ahead and get those coated with the oil in the bottom. Once the onions are nicely coated in the oil, I'm going to add a lid to my pot and let them go for about 20 minutes until the onions are cooked through and translucent, and then we're gonna caramelize them. It has been about 20 minutes. As you can see, the onions have gotten to be translucent. Now it is time to caramelize them. So we're gonna keep the pot uncovered and turn the heat up a little bit from kind of medium low to medium high. Then we're gonna go ahead and add a half a teaspoon of sugar. And a teaspoon of salt. gonna let these go until they get nice and brown and caramelized and so you're just gonna sometimes it takes 30 minutes sometimes it can take shorter so you have to kind of be patient you just kind of move them around a little bit and let them cook and caramelize now that our onions are nice and caramelized we're gonna go ahead and turn down the heat to like a medium low and we're gonna go ahead and add three tablespoons of flour we're gonna cook that for two or three minutes and get all that raw flour taste out. And the flour mixed with the caramelized onions should form kind of like a thick paste. If it doesn't seem to be forming like a thick paste, you can add a little bit more butter, maybe like a half a tablespoon and kind of go from there. But I can already feel that mine are pasting up. Once that raw flour is cooked off, you're gonna take a cup of the beef broth and or the beef stock and you want it to be warmed up and you're gonna put it into your pot and the idea is to scrape off any of the little bits on the bottom of the pot. Now this is a non-stick and so it doesn't get as many of those delicious little bits as if you were using something like a cast iron but you still wanna go ahead with that warm one cup and just start off by making sure you get all the little bits up because that's what makes the soup so delicious. And once you've done that, you're gonna go ahead and add the rest of your broth and some wine and this, some seasonings. All right, so next up, I'm gonna go ahead and add the rest of my beef stock. It should be six cups total. Once that's in there, we're gonna add a cup of our dry wine. I'm using dry white, but you could use dry red as well. 
And lastly, at this stage, we're gonna add a bay leaf and a half a teaspoon of sage. I use about a quarter of a teaspoon in this recipe of sage because to me, sage has such a strong flavor and I think it overpowers it when you use the full half, but if you really like sage, then totally use the full half, up to you. I'm gonna get that all going. Once that's all nice and mixed together, I am going to let this simmer for 30 minutes. While your soup is simmering or coming up to a simmer, you wanna preheat your oven to 325 degrees and you want to slice up your French bread and drizzle a little bit of olive oil on top. These are gonna be like the croutons that go on top of the French onion soup and then you'll sprinkle cheese on top and broil it all together. In this recipe, she has you put all the soup into a casserole dish and then put like a bunch of French bread over the top. So if you were cooking for a crowd, that would be an awesome way to do it. But since it's just my husband and I eating this meal, I'm just making a handful of these. I think we'll probably only each need two, but I just decided to make, you know, seven or whatever. So just so you know, the, what, the way that I'm going to like assemble each soup is different than what the recipe calls for, but you could do it the recipe way and that would make a lot more sense if you were cooking for multiple people, you know, more than two if you're cooking for four or six people or something like that. So just so you know. So anyway, you wanna get those going and then those will go into the oven um, for about 15 minutes or so on each side. You want them to become like little croutons and um, you'll, you'll dri both sides of the bread should be drizzled with olive oil and then you'll put them in the oven, 15 minutes each side while your soup is simmering. All right, I have about 10 more minutes on the croutons in the oven. So the next step with the soup, now that it's been simmering for just about 30 minutes, is I'm gonna grab the bay leaf, it's right here, out of the soup. And then this is when you'll add your raw onion. So you're adding half of a raw onion. You could add less. This just kind of adds a little bit of a different flavor. I'm not gonna add all of this. And then this is also when you add the two to three tablespoons of cognac. I'm adding two. You can leave that out if you don't want it. And then I'm just gonna stir that and let that sit until the croutons are done. And then once they're done, we will assemble our little French onion soups and put them in the oven to get all melty and delicious. Okay, our croutons are out of the oven and our soup is finished. Something I forgot to mention, at the same time when you're adding that cognac and adding that raw onion, you also can add a few ounces of the Swiss cheese into the actual soup. So I did that as well, but I forgot to mention it. So the soup is ready. The oven, I have bumped the heat up from 325 for the croutons up to 350 degrees. And I'm just gonna go ahead and fill our French onion soup crocs. You can get these in a lot of places. Amazon or somewhere online is probably the easiest place to find them, so I will link some options below. But we, in the past, have also just used regular old bowls. Okay, so we have the soup in the crocs, and we're gonna go ahead and put in these croutons. If you have a big slice of bread, you might only need to put in one, but we're gonna fit in two or at least try, be careful because it's super hot. And then you pile up Swiss cheese and Parmesan cheese on top. And the reason why I have these bowls, these crocs inside a larger pan is because this is a little bit messy, but this is what makes French onion soup so delicious is all the cheese on top. And you want it all around the edges so the croutons don't brown. The soup will also usually bubble over, which is another reason why it's a good idea to put them in a dish. This is some Parmesan. I'm going to put that on top as well. And then this recipe calls for this to go in the oven for about 30 minutes, but since we're not doing the casserole dish option, we're just doing these two little ones, I'm gonna put it in there for maybe 10, and then pop the broiler on and get the cheese nice and golden brown. All right, it is all bubbly and done. You can see why it's good to have it in a bigger pan. So we're gonna let this sit for a couple of minutes because it is boiling hot. 
and then we are going to eat. Yum. And there you have it, homemade French onion soup. This is so delicious. Like I said, it is definitely a little bit time consuming, but super worth it for chilly afternoons on the weekends in the fall and winter. If you make this, I would love to hear from you. If you've enjoyed this video, make sure to give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel for more. I will link my cooking playlist above if you wanna check out some of the other recipes I have made lately. Thanks so much for watching. I will see you guys next time.